Smiley Day Geeks, welcome back to the Geek Cider Show. I'm Josh. I'm Anna. And in this video, we're going to be talking about Critical Role Campaign 3, Episode 8. So if you haven't seen it yet and you want to avoid any spoilers, skip this video and come back later because everything we say from this point forward is going to be a spoiler. First thing, this was kind of a short episode for being uh, an extended hiatus. It's yeah. 21 days, it's three weeks until the next episode. Yeah. So it's kind it. of a short, uh, short session. Yeah, but like it ended at a really great point. Yeah. So like I totally get narratively why he decided to go mm -hmm. ahead and end it there instead of keep playing. Because um, who knows when they would have gotten to another great ending point. Yeah. But yeah, I was oh, disappointed that from, it wasn't uh, longer. From a purely yeah. storytelling standpoint, it was the perfect place yeah. to stop. Yeah. It Didn't want it to stop. Yeah. yeah I wanted yeah. to keep going. It, that, that's just us being. Greedy. Selfish, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's let's talk about that ending while while we're talking yeah. about it. Fern, uh, in her rat form, uh, got stepped on, lost that hit point, and poof, there's Fern with how many people are there? It's it's it just two. Is it just two or is yeah. it more? It's either the guard and the boss or two guards and the boss. Well, I, I, I think, I while think, there's whatever. Yeah, I, I think I thought it was three people. But it, I'm, it not, I'm not great. real yeah. clear on how many people are there. Like, basically, how much trouble is she in? Because Ashley says she's got a plan. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so did she have something up her sleeve when she went in there? And, and Fern having any sort of plan worries me on an <laughs> existential level. <laughs> it 100% it involves fire. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not going to be good. Okay, this was the first full episode of Travis's new character, Chetney. And Chetney's, he, he, he's an abrasive little guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and gotta say, I kind of love that, like, half the cast was like, let's flirt with Robbie's character, and Travis is like, I'm gonna haze him. <laughs> he was really rough on Dora. Yeah, he was. He was. And I, I, I couldn't pick out, like, a moment of, like, okay, what set Chetney off about Dorian? I think it's that Dorian looks rich. I think that's what it is? I think that's what it is. Okay. I think it's just his vibe. And because um, Chetney was being so rude to Dorian when Orem introduced uh, himself, he straight up threatened Chetney. Like, I mean, he didn't say he was going to take him outside and beat him, but he was like, and he's my friend. Is that going to be a problem? <laughs> um, and then immediately after, Ashton um, says, I... I basically hit things for people who pay me, and currently they're paying me. Kind of like he, um, they were backing up Orem on that threat. Kind of like, it's not just him. I I'd help. I, I, I did notice Orem with the, you know, like, hey, you need to cool it. With, yeah. With, you know, dumping on Dorian. And, and even in, in uh, Imogen, she's like, look, you, she talked to him in his head. Mm -hmm. You need to take it down a few notches, dude. They uh, they all like themselves some Dorian. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's not what I'm the, saying. Like, if, most if you're going to the... pick on somebody in that group, Dorian's probably not the one to pick on because the whole group is going to back him up. Yeah. Like, pretty much everybody else has had their character flirt with Dorian at some point. Um, I think the only exception to that would be FCG. Um, so, Yeah. Speaking of flirting, um, <laughs> Fern and uh, Chetney flirted a little bit like very intense flirting. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder, because Ashley is nothing if not extremely mischievous. Yes. This is going to happen again. Oh, yeah. If for no other reason, just to make Travis uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I'm kind of, I'm excited for that because like I kind of feel like Travis might have been like I'm gonna choose an old character nobody's gonna romance him and Fern's 112 so that's not gonna put her off at all and she's like I can make it work <laughs> <laughs> so so um you know Tra Travis did he almost like immediately said well let's just keep this professional yeah or, or, or Chetney said yeah Travis. Chetney yeah um but, you know, let's just keep this professional. Yeah, like, Fern's going to do that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There's just so much in this episode to talk about. So, uh, while we're kind of talking about Orem, let's just keep on with that. Um, so, something that really stuck out to me, um, specifically because when they were at the theater, Liam made a point of saying that Orem was clenching the Sending Stone really hard. And as soon as Dorian came back, he let it go. Um he did not specify that 
forum stayed up to wait for Dorian to come back and I did not get the impression from how the scene played out that anybody like I, I didn't get the impression that they all were up and waiting on Dorian um, at all it's just Dorian left with his brother and then they had a long rest so mm -hmm. we have no idea if anybody actually there was stayed up or not no RP at all yeah. when Dorian got back they just got their long rest yeah and like that that just it really stood out to me because um, I feel like that's something Liam would have done. See, up until this point, I kind of meant like, yeah, I'm totally on the um, Ashram ship, but like I could see Dorian, Dorum, or however, however you say that, Dorian and Orum. I could see that ship as well. I don't know anymore. I do think Dorian's got a little bit of a crush on Orum, but now I'm not so sure if Orum reciprocates that or if Orum's just protecting him. He seems more protective of Dorian than he does of Fern. Yeah. But I don't know if that's just he knows Dorian's naive and but he needs yeah, to be protected. Yeah, he needs to be protected, so he's kind of taken the I, I have to protect this. This this thing this, is fragile. Yeah. I have to protect it. Um because that's the vibes I got this episode. Like I said, prior to this episode, I could totally See, I'd be like, okay, yeah, Orem might have a thing for Dorian, and Dorian has a thing for him. Um, totally could see that. I don't see that anymore. I don't, I'm not so convinced that Orem has a thing for Dorian. It could have just been an oversight on Liam's part. Absolutely. That, so, I mean, I mean sometimes there's... you just don't think of stuff when you're RPing, so it doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's one episode. And, and, and you, you know, especially what, like, what would you do videos? You're all kind of always like looking for something, looking for meaning, and sometimes there is no meaning yeah, in something. Yeah, exactly. So it could have just been Liam forgot to mention it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He could have just forgot that. Oh yeah, Orm would have stayed. Orm would have stayed. Right. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to Cyrus, Dorian's brother. Now this mm -hmm. this uh, this interaction between Dorian and Cyrus was it, it felt weird to me because it almost felt like they were retconning or didn't fully remember the interaction they had at the theater like it, like th this interaction felt like it was the first time they had seen each other in a while yeah and they had literally just seen each other a few hours earlier so yeah. it just felt a, a little little weird and maybe it was just like it took a moment for them to, to to figure out what was like i don't know what happened there it just felt weird yeah it felt it felt clunky that's for sure um I mean, there's ways to explain why he would come back that makes sense narratively, but like RP-wise, it did feel a little, little like they just forgot, or that um, he, Dorian didn't do enough to further this, so Matt just brought him back, and it just it didn't feel as natural as it usually just like, does. Like something like simple, like you know, we didn't really get to talk very long at the theater. I wanted to talk, you know, to you more. Yeah. Yeah. That would have, like, okay, but, but just the way it went, it just it felt like the theater didn't happen. didn't happen. Yeah, it did kind of feel like that. But Cyrus is you know, Dorian's older brother. He's next in line for whatever that position is called. You know, <laughs> and because uh, they're, they're being yeah, really they're kind being of very vague, vague about vague. it. Yeah. Um, but uh, Cyrus is a little bit of a screw up. Yeah. A, a, a lot bit. of bit of a screw up. I mean, he, he let, first of all, he, he, uh, I do get the sense that Dorian was, during their childhood, maybe intensely jealous of Cyrus. And so he left because he was kind of in his shadow and like, you know, like this is the first son, he's he's the man. I need to get out of here and, and be on my own and you know make something of myself. And then Cyrus did the same thing. And I, I think Dorian was like, of that like no this is my yeah, thing, this is my thing. You, you can't do, do it. it yeah yeah and then when he found out that cyrus like as soon as he left he immediately got a twenty thousand gold <laughs> bounty well, put on his immediately it was, it, it was a few months he'd been gone seven months the bounty's been there for two so, so he went five, five months. months it took five but months for they royally screw up can we also <laughs> talk about how hypocritical dorian was when he was like you messed it up right out the gate um excuse me sir who probably has a bounty on his head from Pasca back in Iman for stealing a crown mm -hmm. and has almost died a bajillion times. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, you, so did you. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Like, <laughs> he almost died like three times just in this campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do think 
absolutely Cyrus is going to die. And yeah. Dorian is going to have to go inform his parents. And that's how Robbie's exit is going to work. Yeah, that that's kind of the vibe I'm getting as well. I mean, Matt could throw us for a loop. You never know. But yeah, that's absolutely the vibe I'm and, getting. And, and like, you brought up a really good, like, a, a, a fun story beat would be if Dorian gets mistaken for his brother. And, mm -hmm. and there's an altercation there. Um, that's, that's absolutely going to happen. You can't not do that as a DM. <laughs> yeah, like a, a bounty hunter is going to come after Dorian, and that, that'll be like a little side thing that they do, mm -hmm. and they'll handle that. Like, I don't think it'll be much. Uh, hell, maybe it'll even bring a clue that they desperately need. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, like I, I absolutely... Yeah, and that. I don't want that to happen because I, I like Cyrus. I think he's a great character, but that's just what it feels like. <laughs> and of course, um, Cyrus, he has a bounty on his head from, is it Teshi House? Uh, Teshi or Treshi, I can't remember. It's Something But, but like it's that. a house that has basically, they, they're, they're char in charge of two guilds. Which yeah. means this is a very powerful house. Two guilds it's with not, their name attached yeah. to it. So, so this is not a group that you necessarily want to screw with. Yeah. Especially at level four. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. um, how long this arc, this full arc goes is going to be uh, interesting to see. Yeah, definitely. And speaking of bounties, apparently Ashton doesn't have debt in the city necessarily. They have bounties. Um, so they've gotten in trouble and they owe these people money for these bounties and um, they were kind of nonchalant about it but they also knew how serious bounties were when they were talking with Cyrus uh, which makes me think this JH person ha holds one of the bounties on their head mm. and they know just how bad this person is and is hoping that that's not who holds the bounty for uh, Cyrus because um, that means like you can't just leave because that's the one thing is he had mentioned previously that their entire party had left and um, mm. they didn't go with because they had debts. And to Ashton, he's replacing bounties with debts. Yeah. Maybe because it just sounds better and he doesn't want to scare this group. Yeah, perhaps. Um, or but, maybe that's just how they talk to themselves so that they don't get scared. Yeah, <laughs> and that could be it. Um, but yeah, so like, if they didn't leave because of these debts, these bounties, either those bounties would have followed them if they left because these people would have hunted them down, mm -hmm. or they have some sort of internal code that won't allow them to leave. Personally, I think the person so bad that owns these debts, mm -hmm. these bounties, that if they leave, they will be tracked down and they will be killed. Okay, uh, it is three weeks until the next episode of Critical Role, so I think we're going to push our predictions video out probably another week. Yeah, that'll give us time to come up with more wild theories, because I already have a couple that are bonkers out there. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to know what you thought of episode 8, so please let us know down in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please let us know by dropping a like on it and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.